here we are someplace in Washington with Chuck. Chuck is an expert on using rocker boxes, but he's got all kinds of interesting ideas. And one thing that he showed me that I thought was just amazingly fascinating was how he uses a solid surface to screen material. What he's doing now, I presume, is making sure all the particles are separated so they're not stuck together. And this is just a section of a uh, plastic drum, it looks like. I gotta, I gotta get a brush. Okay, he's going to get his paintbrush, which is used, like in many cases, just to move material around. Anyway, okay. I'm, so now I'm he's kind of work it up into two equal parts. This is because it's already bent. It should be a flat board like that. Actually, perfectly flat and is then, best. Yeah, huh? and that way it don't... This migrates too fast. Okay. Uh, As you can see, the coarser particles... And what I mean by migrates too fast? Yeah. See how this is um, already mixed together? Yeah. It doesn't have a chance to get the particles out no more. But if it was on a flat surface, mm -hmm. they would still be separating and, mm -hmm. and then it would uh, it would uh, concentrate out. Well, not concentrate out, it would separate out. By the way, this is some of my low grade sulfide ore from Gold Hollow. And an interesting phenomenon is these little humps of very fine material that show up. Yeah, I wish I knew the science behind that. It's, yeah. it's always intrigued me, too. And now he's... Helping it out. Getting rid of but the I larger don't, stuff. I don't, like, I don't like sweeping down from up here mm -hmm. because um, I got little scratches in this board. Now those and, scratches and are see, intentional, you, you right? You still see the dirt from my, from my dirt. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit of my dirt in there still, too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, those little scratches really grab that fine, fine, and I mean, they're, they're, you can see they're really fine scratches. Yeah. So take like some 60 grit sandpaper or something and just go back and forth sideways with it, huh? I appreciate this better because that just running dirt doesn't really warrant all this cleanup and all this precise yeah. activity. Normally, if this was a flat board, I'd have spread this out over a large area, mm -hmm. and that large area would uh, get the coarser on top, and then it would just... Just blitz it right off, huh? Yeah, it's all so much quicker than this. Cool. Yeah, he was saying that, uh, like the, the boards they used to do shower stalls, the fiber-reinforced plastic, works real well as a nice flat sheet. Great way for dry panning because all the stuff that's got, you see all that is, and that's all the coarser stuff. In just a very short time, I'm going to have all of it in here. You put water with that, you know. Of course, you always use soap with anything dry, and you don't, you know, you don't got a long wash time. Uh -huh. Put a little soap in there, and then just tap it a couple times. Just bring it out like that, and this would be your gold up here, just that quick. You can dry pan it just like that. Just huh? like that. Okay. Oh yeah, that that was for dry with water. You use the soap, but okay. for dry for dry panning. Um, for dry yeah. panning, you just tap it. Yeah, the, there was gold there. Yeah, being, just, that, being that this is uh, got some gold around, I was kind of careful. Probably nothing coarse enough to act as coarse gold. I say everything in there is probably you know maximum of fifty mesh. Because you see, get this bleed out, little rivers ribbons that run down. Yeah, and you can see. What I'm doing is I'm running into the next stage. Of, it, it breaks down in, in, in um, stages. We'll call it stages. Mm -hmm. And each stage, now that I've taken out this court, out the really coarse stuff, these big pieces, now I'm into another stage. And when I get done with it, there'll be another stage. It'll be even finer. It'll come out, which is trying to come out in these rib in the in the. In the uh, because right now it looks like we're at about 50 to 100 mesh. And it's, it's interesting, sometimes you see these little 
mounds. Oh, there's a good one. See these little mounds there? Yeah, I can over here. I have no idea what the phenomenon is that does that. I presume it's some kind of acoustical sort of situation. But there, along this stream, you can see there's a, a that's ridge what, of finer material. Yeah, that's what you watch out for to know that you're going to be running it off there. Yep. So you stop and maybe help that much out. And that's, uh, I see how that's getting to like cake flour. Yeah, cake, cake, uh, yeah, yeah, cake flour. Not almost, just flour, cake flour. Yeah, uh, it's, it's extra, getting pretty extra. fine. Uh, try to spread it out because it helps. Uh, Helps things get to the surface and then well, work their way like out. Well, like I say, huh? I don't have a flat board that I'm bending round. Mm -hmm. If it was a flat board being bent round, it would spend longer flat and not pile up so quick. And once it's piled up, it has a, uh, a, a magnetic effect on itself, so it... Um, Tends like, to bind to itself, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, it locks it in that little pile. Those little piles you're seeing. Yeah. Pulled up. Now, those could have had coarse stuff in them, too, but they weren't letting go of it no more. Okay. See this way. See, see it just all come up a little. Yeah. I don't know if the light. I should be able to see that. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, when you, you did see that. all those little particles. Gonna, now this one here, I'll, I'll be completely cleaning the last of that last st st stage out. You're running a mouse like this is unless you're running a concentrate out of a rocker box is kind of pointless because you you know. If you're panning, that's what you wanted down there, not what's on here. Yeah. What's on here is kind of like... This uh, would be the very, very microfine gold would be up with this stuff, and the easily panned material would be down in the pan. Well, this is what I mean by uh, the stuff I, I'm used to being too small to pan, when yeah. people talk about too small to pan. This is too small to pan. It just it gets so small that if you're into the 1,200 mesh, 1,600 mesh, uh -huh. This is basically letting them do it themselves. Hmm. You know, and you can see they're they're all by themselves here. Even now, you see, I'm getting into that next. I'm gonna pull it all back up because I finally entered that last. Yeah, stage. that's that's below a hundred mesh there now. Yeah. See, but there ain't no powder with that. It's just fine little fine crystals. Yeah, that's about. I'm guessing 70, 80 mesh. That's what I'm going to take off next. Yeah, you see, each time I've done this, it's jumping down to another. Yeah. And I will reach a point, I won't get any more out. And that's when I figure I'm about, oh, 400 below. You see all this white powder building up here? Yeah. That's a that's that's where a lot of the really fines really like to hang. And, See, this is really so good. getting separation here. Yeah, like I say, I'll take this. I can take this down really, really, really fine. But see, I'm not hardly moving anything now. Yeah, it's pretty much stopped the. Now let me go ahead and get my pocket microscope here and see just what size that is. About the largest particle I could find was three thousandths of an inch. <laughs> Most of them around one thousandth of an inch. With a substantial amount, half of that. So yeah, that's that's extremely fine. The thing that I find interesting is that to actually physically screen to this size is extraordinarily oh, difficult oh, to yeah. do. Just this little bit here would be like an almost. You'd be a half an hour. You, yeah, your your screens just plug up and everything, and yet this method here looks like something that could probably be mechanized to a certain extent. Well, they, 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 they used to sell boards. Huh? I, I knew somebody had some antique boards. They were actually made out of plastic, so they weren't that old. Yeah. But they, they were, uh, I, I, I borrowed this idea from his description because I was making them a little different. If I hadn't gone this far, this is the gold you're finding. Mm -hmm. If you got fairly decent flakes, I didn't have to go this fine. Right. I could have stopped and like I said, it would have dry panned out and all the gold, you would see literally dry yellow up here without, you know, no huh. water on it. You don't need water to see it. Okay. But the finer stuff, yes, you do. You can't see it. It's just, okay. for some reason, it's just invisible. Well, what we can do is we can try panning 
this stuff here with well, water. I figured we, we would do uh, both of them to uh, yeah to show the varying. Because uh, this shouldn't have any coarse gold. I mean, there no, shouldn't be anything over 50 mesh in this stuff. Well, because also I'm just going to do it in the creek, so there won't be any saving. Uh, there, 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 weren't, there ain't going to be no backup. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Do you want me to go get some jet dry? I got some in my car. Um, uh, man, I got some. I got some hand soap that I use. Okay, I'm back in uh, Tucson, and I've set up this little uh, test rig here to try and define a few more parameters of screening without screens. This is just a piece of aluminum sheet I had laying around the uh, shop here. I've used a couple clamps and stuff to give it a steep tilt this way and a little tilt that way. And the hope was I could get the coarser particles to go this direction here, well the finer particles to go that way there. Didn't seem to work out too well. However, I found out that if I take this and drop this on the surface, the bigger particles almost immediately make their way to the bottom. So I get this coarse stuff here immediately, leaving stuff in the neighborhood of 50, 30 mesh bigger. Then if I just tap it gently, the next size material comes out almost instantly and then we have this material left here. Now, it's a very rapid separation and compared to a screen, I think that seems to be working pretty well. I just can't figure out how to make something go one way and something else go the other. The sizes were basically this. This is about 30 to 50 mesh plus the stuff that comes off instantly. As soon as it hits the, the plate it just rolls right off. This uh, size here is the intermediate size. Seems to be about 75 to 50 mesh. And then the stuff that's still sitting up there is running more in the neighborhood of you know 75 or 100 mesh minus all the way down to 200 mesh. So, I say it's a very interesting effect. One thing I tried was I uh, put scratches on the other side of this plate with some 36 mesh sandpaper to see if it would help direct things and the answer was pretty much no. It pretty much does the same thing, except it actually holds it back a little more. Very similar action. So, that's about all I've come up with so far. It's an interesting effect. It would be very useful in the field, especially if you needed to find screen and you didn't bring your screens with you. You could probably use almost anything slick piece of cardboard would probably work. So, say there it is, something very interesting, something that I thought other people would find interesting, and maybe somebody can figure out a way to mechanize that and make it work in a large scale production sort of thing, in which case it might be very useful. So, there we are, how to screen without screens. And uh, you can screen pretty darn fine, uh, check up there, on one of his runs, he screened it down to about four or five hundred mesh, just doing the technique that you saw him doing up there. So it can do it very, very fine screening, very simply, uh, very low tech, and uh, I say I'm not exactly sure exact you know where it would come in handy in a big production operation. I think somebody's got to do a little inventing, but there's the phenomenon. Have fun out there and uh, see if somebody comes up with something really useful. So, happy prospecting and keep it safe.